Hello, welcome to my channel again. My name is Candy. I'm a software developer. So on this channel, I just, you know, get my hands dirty. I'm trying out new technologies, uh, new tricks that could speed up your software development journey, new techniques, you know, that can help you um, solve problems quickly and more efficiently. So today I have something interesting that I want to share with you. So if this is your first time here, subscribe to my channel. Um, if you enjoy this content, um, like, leave a comment, and turn, your, turn on your post notification so that when I drop my next video, you're going to be among the first people to um, watch it. So straight to the business for today. Today, I want to build a full-blown backend service with Next.js. Uh, we're going to be using the MySQL as a database. We're going to be interacting with MySQL using the SQLized ORM. We're going to be connected to our MySQL using Docker. So I... Uh, recently tried out building uh, a backend with Next.js and it was really, really nice. It was interesting, a great experience. So I decided to, you know, why not just share my YouTube channel and some people that don't uh, mind this content might actually help them out. So once again, subscribe, like, comment, and turn on your post notification. Let's get started. First things first, we need to um, create our Next.js app. So I'm just going to spin up my server. I'm just going to run npx create, sorry, create next app uh, to do backend okay so let's run this uh, type scripts i'm using type scripts yes lens yes Turbin, yes no app router yes no so while this is installing our dependencies we are going to be using docker to connect to mysql so let's run our container here who is running so if i'm just going to leave this um i'll leave these commands in the terminal so you can use these commands to set up your docker and connect to mysql using docker i'm going to copy this and leave it in the um, description so you can use so after that um we can use our mysql bench to connect to our um to my SQL, so let's just open this quick. So do backend. Okay, here you are. So let's start this up quickly. Let's do npm run there. That's what we have. Okay. So let's run this local security thousand. So while that is loading up, okay, great. So building an API with uh, Next.js, you need to inside it, this app directory, we are going to create an API folder, call it API, and inside, you know, for Next.js client side. Uh, when you create a folder inside the app directory, you, you need to create this page.jsx to render the page. But for the backend, you need to create a route.jsx, sorry, the JS file. So now, you can now export constant. The name of the function is going to be the, re the request method. If this is going to be a get request, I'm going to do get. If it's going to be a post request, it's going to be post. If it's going to be a patch, it's going to be patch. And if it's going to be delete, it's going to be delete. So it's going to be async. Let's sync. Let's see. Requests. Uh, so let's just return next response from next.js.json. Uh, message. This is my next JS to do application. So let's just save this. So let's come here, slash API. See, now we are up and running. This is my next JS to do application. So this next response is synonymous to the response we are going to be getting if we, are, if we were to use Express JS. But in next year, so we're going to be using this next response to send um, a response to the client. So to get started, we need to connect to our database. 
let me create a help pass folder here inside let me create a sequelize.js file so let's visit sequelize websites getting started so we can just copy this command to install sequelize let's open a new terminal so while this is running yeah so here we can now import um, from sequelize so we are going to be importing sequelize from sequelize so here we need to initialize sequelize that's going to be sequelize new sequelize and here we're going to be passing in our um, username password passing in our database we're going to be passing in um, the host we're going to be passing in um, the benchmark uh, uh, okay I'm going to be passing in the dialects. Here it's going to be MySQL. Dialect module. So we need to install. We need to install MySQL2 as npm install MySQL2. So let's create an env file my sql so let's create an env file what env let's do next public Next public username going to begin with next public password going to be using which And um, finally, we need what else we need? Database, we need the database. Next, public database. I'm going to be using um, my to do. So let's come to SQLize. Here we are going to be doing process.png. Just, I'm just going to pause the video and put this in quickly so we waste time. Okay, now we've updated our environmental variables. Now we need to initialize this. So we are going to be using our same. So this is going to be self calling function. And try catch. Look, let it come so going to be doing a wait sequelize dot authenticate. So we log it console dot log matter is connection successful. Um we need to sync with sequelize dot sync. Let's do alter true. so that when we create a new model, it will automatically update the model on the database. So let's quickly create our database on using the MySQL workbench. So I'm just going to pause this quickly. So we are just going to create a new database here. Create database. I'm just going to name this my to do. App. So this. So, let's 
refresh my to do app so we can come to our environment and here database my to do app so this close and yeah so let's test this out now let's go to our app dot let's test this out here in our routes.js file so let's create a dummy model constant um, dummy is equal to sequelize we are going to be importing oh i didn't export sequelize from here we need to export it export default sequelize so we are going to be creating sequelize dot define the, the name of this um table is going to be let's just call it dummy i'm gonna take in some attributes let's call this um title type we are going to be importing data type from sequelize data types let's do import Data types from sequelize data types dot string dot string. Uh, let's do allow now true and then default value. Let's get it. So now let's come here quickly. Constant dummy. Let's just fetch them is equal to create this dummy to dummy dot find all find all is a method on sequelize so let's just log this to the console and since I'm connecting to my root let me just take out the password so, not there everything is working fine so let's come back here let's run this again so this will throw an error initial yeah so this is nice so let's refresh again oh oh i can see the bug username is supposed to be this so let's come here now also mistake. Let's do this again. Okay, so let's take out the password. Let's reboot this. Okay, good. Now we've been able to connect to our database. So let's see. So let's take this out, out. So let's log dummy to the console. Yeah, dummy is an empty array. So now we can start. Let's clear this out. Let's clear all of this for now. So now let's create a task route inside our API folder. Let's create a task folder. Task or let's call it to do inside this to do let's create a routes.js file so the first thing we are going to be doing is creating a task so we're going to be exporting constant posts go to a sync requests let's do try catch now let's log Error to the console. So let's define define a model for our task. Let's create inside our L pass. Well, let's just create it. In, let's create a model. Let's Let me move this to the root. So let's import sequelize, and uh, let's import data types so now constant to do is equal to t 
Equalize.define. This is to do. Uh, so this is going to have a title. The type of data types dot string. Uh, going to allow null value and the default is going to be null. So just going to duplicate this for description. Now the dates is going to be dot dates. So it's good practice to add the created part. And uh, database type is going to be data types dot dates. The default value that's going to give the default value of new dates. So let's replicate this for updated that. So let's just export this model. Export default to do. Fine, that's all we need to do. So let's come back here. In ExpressJS, if you need to um, access the request body, all you need to do is console.log um, request dot to get it but then in sgs it works a bit differently to get our body we're going to do body equal to await direct request not json so we can now extract the content of our body so here we are expecting the title and description that's equal to body. so now let's just log this to the console title description call it description so we are going to be using postman so let's create a collection name this to do my to do save so let me add the request here is going to be on local host http local host host 3000 slash api slash to do so it posts requests so let's just save this internal server area so it's passing a body title by first task description is going to be this is my first task. so let's run this it slash api slash to do so this is supposed to work slash api slash to do something is wrong okay something is wrong okay let me just return a response return next response next json message and success let's try this again good so now for our title my first task describe our pt description let's pass that again this is my first task now you can see we have our request body here so and for error handling in um express gs you can just do if there is no title or there is no description and just return for next years next response but then there's a trick there message um title and description are required um status let's do that even if we add status code here let's do for so let's see what happens 
if we take one of these out. So, now, title and description field are required. Why are we getting error? See our log. No response is returned from. Oh, sorry. It should be response dot JSON. Yeah, let's try this again. This is supposed to be an error, but if you look at the status message, see through a status code of two hundred. Now, what do we do to uh, make this actually true an error? Because if you call this endpoint on the front end, it's not going to try an error because it's it status status two hundred, which is, which means it's successful. So now we need to do this. Status code of 400. Now, if we run this now, it's going to show an error. Uh, something is wrong. Status code 400. Um, okay, let's try status. Test again. Status of 400. Okay, so apparently we are returning to response. So let's just take this out. We do status of 400. Let's test this again. Now we have what we need to have. Okay. Uh, now we need to save this to the server. Constant to do is equal to await to do. Let's create. I'm going to be passing in the title and the description. So I'm going to be returning next response. Dot JSON. Status to do success uh, message. Let's do to do created and um, data. Let's do to do. Let's pass the status code here. Status of uh, two hundred and two one for created. So let's try this out again. Description. We have an error. Let's see, so just try again. So now we have our new to do created. So we can just save this as an example. Now next, we need to let's undo this server here. Let's just do return. Next response, next question. Open message. Something Let's yeah. do status code of 500. So now let's fetch a list of to do. Let's do export constant get async. Request. So let's do try catch here. Let us return server response. Next response. Let's just say message of something is wrong. Let's give it a status of 500. So here we need to want to. Supposed to be we want to fetch a list of to do to do list that should be our to do dot find from so and that is return next response uh, message to do list which 
street. Data is going to be our to do list. So let's run this first. Um, so this request. So let's add a new request. To do, uh, let us run this quickly. Something went wrong. So what went wrong? So let's, let's see our error log. So again. Okay. I love the wire to the console. Oh, instead, we'll just pass our error here. Okay. I'm not getting anything of error, so let's try and debug this off of the line. Okay, I can see the error as well, so use await here. So let's test that again. Okay, so having that. I keep making this mistake here. Dot JSON. Keep making this mistake. So let's run this. Now we have our to do list. Now, um, SQLize is related to Mongoose in a way, so we can select some attributes. Let's say I just want to have the title and uh, description. So save this out. Now we will have the title and description. So that's it for retrieving a list of um, to-dos. Now let's write an endpoint to fetch a single to-do. We are going to be using the dynamic navigation we're going to create a folder here, here to do ID. I'm just going to call this to do ID. And inside, you are going to have the routes.js. So here, I'm going to be exporting the get requests. That was requests here. Let's do our try catch again. So don't forget, let me just come here and pick this code here. It's good practice to you know just uh, abstract this into a new function. I just call the function, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to be doing this for now. So let me import next response. Yeah. So um, to get a single request in uh, ExpressJS, all we need to do is just do constant. Oh, sorry. You can just do constant this is equal to rec.paths and then we have our parameter but then in next.js is different so we are going to be expecting another um, parameter let's call this context and here we can extract our to do id that's constant to do id that's equal to context Dot params. So now we can log this to the console. To do ID, to do, to do ID. So now let's run a response. Let's respond. Let's listen. Message. To do retreat. So let's come to postman. Let's save this as an example first. So let's get this is going to be get to do by ID. Let me just name all this first. It's going to be create to do list to do. So it's going to be the same, but with a different tweak is going to be the ID. So this list to do, let me add the ID to the attributes that I'm expecting. 
ID. So let me run this again. It's supposed to be one. Yeah. So let's run this. Should do the cheat. So our to do ID here is one. So we can use this to do ID to query the database. Constant to do is equal to await to do dot find one. To do where ID is equal to to do ID. To do oh, I'm not supposed to know inside this folder. Sorry. No spaces. It's supposed to be here. So constant to do is equal to await to do to do not find one to do yeah id is equal to to do id so we can also do the attribute stuff here but then i'm just going to send you uh, the data data so let's undo um our error here if the to do is not found if there's no to do i just turn next to this point but json status message let's do to do let's find okay let's hear it let's find it all for that so let's save this let's run this um, endpoint again so now we have a to-do list so if i do use an id for a to-do that doesn't exist now we have to-do not found so let's do one let's have to do this save this as an example yes. so let's create a new to-do again um, next year school build the backend next year okay good so let's put our list of to do like this so now i made a mistake here so i'm just going to write an endpoint to update we are still going to be using this same um dynamic route because to update and uh it to do we need it to do id and some requests from the body. So let me just clear this console log. Close this out. I'm going to be using the patch method. Constant patch. Equal to async request. I'm going to be naming the context too. Uh, try catch. Let me just copy this code here. Okay. Uh, let me just pick this since I'm still going to be using it. Yeah. In fact, in fact, let's pick one of this. Because to update it to do, we are going to be getting the to do ID um, from. I can paste it first. Constant says the equal to context of files to do ID. So to update it to do, we need to get it to do ID from the context. We also need to we need to find the to do in the database, check if the to do exists. Now we need to update that to do. To update, we need just need to do await to do dot updates. Um, before then, let's get our request body constant body is equal to don't forget I will get it await request.json so constant is equal to body item and description so here to update all we need to do is just pass in the title and the description so let's get that updated to do because this is just going to return the ID of the tool that was updated. 
completed to do is equal to await to do dot find one okay here id is equal to to do id and we're just going to return that created to do let's do return next response dot json message it to be updated and uh, data and the data and the details Let's go over this again. To update a to-do, we get the to-do ID from the context, we get the body, the request body from, the, from our request object, and then we extract our title and description. Okay, let me just make this, let me just close it. We extract our title and description, we find our to-do in the database. If the to-do does not exist, we throw an error, and then we update our to-do in the database, fetch the updated to-do, and then we send it to the client. So let's see this in practice. Updates to do. We're going to be using the patch request method. Uh, let's do this. Let's try for it to do that doesn't exist first. Okay, I'm getting this to do now. Something is wrong. So let's see what's wrong. Let's log our error to the console. Let's try again. Expected end of JSON input. Oh, okay. I know what's wrong. We actually need to pass in the request body. Let's do a description. But then we need to validate if the ID exists first before we extract this. So let me just pick this out and come here. So you're supposed to first check if the ID exists. So let's run this again first. Let me clear this out. Okay. Let's get over this time around. Patch. Okay, I haven't taken this out. So now it's supposed to work. To do not find because we need to validate if that to do exists before we even extract the request from the body. So now let's do Pi2. Pi2 is going to be. I just want to update the description actually. Of the last one I created. So I P T I okay. We have this build the backend notebooks. You can see this backend is not well spelled, so I'm just going to say backend in next years. This is last to do ID two. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's do this. Okay, let's try the description. Let's see what we have. Okay, what about error? This is a problem. Just for clarity's sake, let's just pass in our title. Okay. Title one, learn, and skills. Let's do that again. Um, I missed out on this. Where ID is to do ID. This should even work.
now it has been updated back end updated with next.js so next let's do a delete save requests context and the try catch let's just copy this Awesome. Let's collapse this. Firstly, we need to extract our to do ID from our context dot params. Next, we need to check find our to do is equal to await to do dot we will find one. Yeah, ID is equal to to do ID. So we need to check if our to do does not exist. If there's no to do, let's just return. Let's do next response. Oh, it's like a guess again. But JSON status message to do not find. Let's do status of four hundred. So if the to do actually exists, all we need to do is await to do dot destroy. Where our ID is equal to to do ID. So this should delete to do. Let's do return. Next response dot json message is to, to do deleted. So now to delete a to do, we just need to extract the to do ID from the context object, find the to do in database, check if the to do exists. If it does not exist, true an error, and if it exists, um we use this model, this to do just destroy it to remove it from the database and then we send a request or a response to the clients. So let's save this patch. So this is an example. Okay, so let's add last one, which is to delete to do. It's going to be a delete request. And um, let's try if it, it's a to do ID that doesn't exist. We have to do no found. So let's use it to do that actually exists. Let's do to do of two to do deleted. Now, if you come back to fetch list of to do, if you have just one, yeah, if you have just one. So now, here is how you can create crud operations using um, next years. So quickly, let's go over all of this code again. Here we have our to do here you can create a to do you this is how you extract a request a, a request body in xgs you take your title and description check if they exist you create call the create method and then you send the response to the client to get fetch list of to do we also have this so in a way um building the back end with nextjs is almost the same Basically, it's just syntax that differs. Um, my opinion is once you understand the basics of JavaScript and JavaScript as, as, an, ecosystem, as an ecosystem as, uh, as a whole, you can um, pick up any new framework that comes up. Because basically, your concept is the same. It's just the syntax that you need to pick up quick. So let me know if you enjoyed this video. I'm going to be leaving the um, this repo in the description so you can uh, check out the code. If you have um, suggestions, comments, leave it in the comment section. Um, if you still haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. Subscribe, uh, turn on your post notification so you get notified when I drop my next video. Uh, once again, I enjoyed doing this a lot, so uh, like the video and um, share. Thank you very much and see you in my next video. Peace out.